Hi, my name is Mac Pierre Hui, and this is a YouTube channel for YourChartsBoller.com. I'm an attorney at Pierre Louis Associates PLLC, and I'm also a mediator, and this is a law office that's located in Houston, Texas. Today, I wanted to go over how to calculate child support manually. There's a lot of people who go online and plug in child support numbers and get inaccurate information. They get wrong answers, and I've seen some of these tools that are on the internet um, giving people bogus advice. So today, I wanted to go through how to manually calculate child support by using a formula and using the tax chart that's available for free on the internet at the Texas Attorney General's website. Uh, but first, this information is for educational purposes only and should not be construed as legal advice. All right, so in this hypothetical, we're going to assume that this there's a father and we'll call him John Doe. John Doe has two kids. One kid lives with him at his home who he supports directly. The other kid, he has a court order where he's supposed to pay child support. And so we're going to calculate his child support based on his average monthly gross income. All right, so the, in this scenario, we're going to assume that John Doe is going to be making an average monthly gross income of $5,332.59, okay? That is our assumption that he's going to be bringing in each month $5,332.59 gross. Now, how I came up with that number, I can't really help you out with. That'll be on you. But basically, just get an average of what the obligor makes each month to start things off. Okay, so for example, if an obligor makes $60,000 a year, well, to get the average gross income each month, it's simple. Just divide it by 12 to get the monthly average gross income each month. Or if you um, have a tax return for the end of the year and you have a gross sum for the whole year, again, just divide it by 12 to get an average. Uh, I may do another video in the future on how to get to this average gross income each month, but this is a place you start. You have to have this number to begin this process, okay? So let me go through some of what I have here on the board so that you can kind of see what we're working with today. The first thing is we need to know his gross income. Again, the average monthly gross income. And we have that here, $5,332.59. Then we're going to deduct from that the, a number known as the lower gross. That number will be listed on the tax chart that's provided by the Texas Attorney General's office. Then we're going to multiply that answer by the difference between the higher net and the lower net amounts you will again find on the tax chart provided by the Attorney General's office. We're going to di divide that product by $100, also known as moving the decimal back two spaces. Then finally, we're going to add that answer to the lower net that we find on the tax chart provided by the Attorney General. And that will give us our net income each month. So we can go from the gross income, $5,332.59, and get to the net income by the tax chart taking out Social Security, Medicare, and FICA. Then we will take that net income and we're going to deduct from that the obligor's credits. And by credits, I mean specifically three things. Any state taxes he might pay. Uh, for example, some states have state taxes, not just federal taxes. Uh, in Texas, we don't really have a state income tax, so we don't really worry about that too much. Also, we have to give him credit for any union dues he might pay each month. In Texas, again, most people aren't in unions. However, there are people who are police officers, firefighters, teachers who do pay uh, union dues. And so we need to make sure we give them credit for the monthly union dues that they pay. And finally, we have to give him credit for the cost of insurance. This is probably the most popular credit that the obligor is going to get. And so it's typically going to be the cost of health insurance that he provides each month or that he pays to the 
obligee to provide the insurance for the child. Um, also, remember, effective September 2018, he's also going to be getting credit for dental insurance as well. So anyway, we again take the net income that we received over here, we deduct from it, subtract from it the credits that he gets, and we arrive at our adjusted net income. And it's this adjusted net income that we will take over here and multiply it by the percentage, by the correct percentage that we find on the tax chart. And everyone knows about this tax chart. Uh, for one child, for example, the tax chart says it is 20% of your adjusted net income. For two children, it is 25% of your adjusted net income. For three, three children, 30%. Uh, four children, 35%. Five children, 40%. And it caps there at 40%. Now, if he has children living with him at home or other children he might support through other court orders, of course, he'll get a credit on the percentage. And that's why in our scenario, John Doe has one child living at home and one child who he's going to be paying child support for through a court order. So on the tax chart, John Doe is going to pay 17.5% of his adjusted net income. And that will produce the final answer of child support. Monthly child support for him to pay to the obligee. So we can go from the gross income, here in this scenario, $5,332.59, and we can get to the accurate monthly guideline child support down to the penny, as long as we are using the correct tax chart information and the correct percentage. All right, now I'm going to be doing this example on the board manually, but first I'm going to show you the tax chart that I'm going to be using. So please stay tuned for this quick minute explanation of the tax chart, and then I'll be right back to actually do the calculations. All right, so here we go on the tax chart. So I'm on the computer and I'm going to the internet and I have here open the Attorney General of Texas's website where it lists the current tax charts and it actually lists tax charts going back years. Um, but I'm gonna click on the most recent 2018 revised tax chart and when I do it's going to take me to this page where it basically um, states that it's effective February 2018 uh, this is because of the Trump tax cuts that had changed the numbers from January 1st 2018 and on the employed persons 2018 revised tax chart I'm going to scroll down to right about here where the numbers that I'm seeking will fall. Remember that in my scenario, John Doe makes exactly $5,332.59 per month on average. And so I'm going to look at the list and find where that number falls. In the first column, I see the gross. This column is gross, monthly gross wages. Next column, Social Security. Next column is Medicare, and last column is tax. And then finally, the last column is net monthly income. And so scrolling down here, $5,332.59 falls in between $5,300 gross and $5,400 gross. And then after the taxes are taken out, it will produce um, a number in between these two net incomes. 4,286.93 and 4,357.28. Now, I'm going to screenshot this and I actually have for you, um, I plugged in where I list the defined terms. So again, the $5,300 is the lower gross. The 4,286.93 cents is the lower net. And the four thousand three fifty-seven and twenty-eight cents is the higher net, and I'm doing this because the scenario gives me five thousand three thirty-two and fifty-nine cents gross income per month, and that's going to fall in between 
these two rows, 5,300 and 5,400. Hello again, so we are here back on the board and we're going to actually calculate the child support based on the numbers that we obtained from the tax chart put out by the Attorney General's office. So again, going back over our terms, gross income, okay? In our scenario, we have the gross income as $5,332.59. And we're going to subtract that from the lower gross that's on the tax chart. And on the tax chart, that lower gross value is $5,300 even. Then we're going to multiply that by the difference between these two numbers, the higher net and the lower net, okay, that's on the tax chart. So once we calculate that, we're going to multiply those two numbers together. We're going to take that product divided by 100, also known as moving, moving the decimal back two spaces. And then we're going to add that to the lower net, the lower net income value that we already have over here to get our net income. So let's go ahead and calculate this. So we're going to take John Doe's average monthly gross income, $5,332.59. We're going to subtract that from the lower gross income that's on the tax chart of $5,300 even. And we are going to get $32.59. We're going to take that number, we're going to multiply it by the difference here. So we're going to take $4,357.28, which is our high net income on the tax chart, and we're going to subtract it from the lower net income on the tax chart from $4,286.93, and we're going to get $70.35. We're going to multiply these two numbers and divide it by 100, or just move the decimal back two spaces, then we're going to finally add it to the $4,286.93. All right, let's go ahead and do this. 32.59 times 70.35 is, I'll go ahead and do this, $2,292.93. We're going to divide that number by 100. And now, this whole section will be 22.9293, round up. And we're going to add that to the 4286.93 plus 4286.93. Equals four thousand three hundred nine dollars and eighty six cents. This is our final net income. This is the number we've been waiting for. We went from a gross of five thousand three hundred thirty two dollars and fifty nine cents, and it resulted in the net income of four thousand three hundred nine dollars and eighty six cents this net income is not on the Texas Attorney General tax chart we had to do it manually through extrapolation to get to this number now that we have our monthly net income we're going to take that number and continue with it I'm going to move that number over here so our net income is what we're going to then take and deduct from it the credits that the abogor is entitled to, state taxes, union dues, and medical insurance. So $4,309.86, let's subtract from that. Let's say union dues is nothing. Let's say state taxes is nothing. And let's say he pays $100 per month in insurance costs for the child. 
So we're going to take our $4,309.86, we're going to deduct from it $100 to get an adjusted net of $4,209.86. And this number is what we've really been waiting for because now we can take this number and multiply it by the correct percentage. And what percentage are we going to use? Remember, on the percentage chart, when an obligor has to pay child support for one child, it's 20% of his net income. For two children, it's 25%. For three children, it's 30%. For four children, it's 35%. For five or more, it caps at 40%. But if he has other children living with him, or for whom he's paying child support already through another court order, then he's going to get a credit for that other mouth he has to feed. In our scenario, remember, John Doe has one child living at home with him, and he has another child who he has paid child support for that we're calculating here. So on the tax chart, since he has one child before the court and one child living with him, it will be 17.5%. You can find this uh, percentage chart on our blog site, yourchildsupportlawyer.com forward slash calculate. You can also find it on the internet if you just Google the Texas Child Support Percentage Chart for the number of children that the obligor has to support. All right, so we're going to take the $4,209.86 net, and we're going to multiply that by the correct percentage. So 4200 oh, made a mistake here, 4209 dollars and 86 cents net, and we're going to multiply that by 17 and a half percent, and that gives child support of $736.72.73. Let's average up to the nearest penny. So that is how you get final child support from a gross income of $5,332.59. You can go from that gross income all the way to a monthly child support amount of $736.73. Now, remember, I use the tax chart that's free online but on the Attorney General's website. I use the percentage chart that is available for free also online is on our website as well and I use a calculator. That's it. I didn't need to use any other tools but I was able to get correct child support of 736.73 each month from the gross of 5,332.59 cents. Now I use the 2018 revised tax chart. This is different from the January 1st, 2018 tax trial that came out earlier this year. We're now, right now, in June 2018. The reason it's different is because of the Trump tax cuts where the tax rates change for a lot of people around the country. So make sure that you're always using the correct tax chart. And as long as you have the correct tax chart, the correct percentage chart, and the a calculator, you will be able to follow the formula and calculate correct child support down to the penny. I hope this helped. Uh, one last tip. Make sure that the tax chart you're using is either for an employed person or a self-employed person because the tax rates do change depending if you work for yourself or if you are a W-2 earner who works for a company or for somebody else. All right, again, this is Mac Pierre. If you found these videos helpful, please make sure you subscribe. And thank you for watching.